Hello to the four of you. Thank you so much for your time because I know you're having an insane day. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're going to talk about good. Tolkien and get paid for it. It's good. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, Benjamin, let's just start with you because uh, you're the king. So, you know, that's the fair. That's the fairness. Yep. But I want to ask you, once you book the role and then you go home and you think about what role you've taken and what the scope of what you're going to be in, were you freaking out a little bit? Yeah, I was and still am. Um, but luckily, anytime I get too nervous or confused or worried, I kind of, I go back to the source material. It's so dense and so supportive of the world we're trying to create that I find that uh, that's the best place for comfort for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And Sophia, for you, I mean, Disa, what an amazing character. Seriously, a gift from God? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. She is. She is. She's um, she's a huge, huge blessing. Uh, just because what it means for the for the industry, for the world of Tolkien, uh, for the Tolkien fans, um, uh, the accessibility that it gives for, for for new fans to come into play. Um, she is a vision and a formidable character, and I am the mere host uh, uh, of such an iconic moment. It's thrilling. Yeah, I'm sure it must be, especially with having your theater background. Did that help you at all with the, with what you had to endure for this? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like I spent years in theater kind of learning the craft and depicting the minutiae of all the details of scripts and characters and bringing them to life with with not a lot of set and not a lot of costume and not a lot of resources. So right. to kind of have that kind of um, foundation uh, uh, behind me in actually what feels like quite a theatrical piece, you know, yes. this is epic. There is a theatricality to Tolkien. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, yeah, it, it was definitely transfer transferable, and I hope um, I hope uh, uh, some people will be able to kind of see that, and and definitely my fellow thespians. Absolutely, which which I am, by the way. Um, okay, Leon, you're next. Uh, getting on the set, you're on there. You're the first day. There's these giant sets. It's insanity. How do you wrap your mind around that? You don't have to wrap your mind around anything. It's all there. That's what was so incredible about it. I, I've worked in these studios before. I'm from Auckland. I know that there's not actually a city there most of the time, but you turned up and in the back lot, they built blocks upon blocks of Numenor. They gave you everything. They thought about the architecture. They thought about the centuries things were built in. They had incense burning, the, the costumes. I mean, you, you just got to surrender to it. There was no kind of imagination necessary, to be completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. So Tristan, you know, I, I, I want to know about some of the prep that you guys go through. Like what, once you knew you were going to play this role and you had to really dig into your character, mm. what was your process? So my process, once I found out I got the role, um, so I went immediately went home. I pulled out a pewter tank good that is there and I celebrated and then the next day then I thought, right, let's get a business. And I, then I really celebrated and that there was a pattern going on there. Slowly. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I thought, right, okay, better do some work. Start now. working. Yeah. 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 So, this is um, serious. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, for my character, because my character is a very political figure in uh, Numenor as yes. well as, you know, being uh, being Marshall and everything, he's he's very political when we see him at this moment in time. So anything that was to do with uh, geopolitics, anything sociological, any you know anything you could sort of Hoover or drink up from the outside world, I think helped on top of uh, reading uh, the books and yes. seeing the films and immersing yourself in that fantastical world as well. So yeah, what an amazing world! I mean, so far what I've seen is so beautiful. Okay, so I have to ask out of the four of you. Um, and just just put up your hand and jump in on this one. Who is the most fluent in Tolkien? Who's the best at it out of the four of you? Who's the best at Tolkien? Well, Who knows you... the most lore? The, the lore, the language, everything. Oh, I, I don't know. That's uh, that's quite I've, I've never thought really about competing. <laughs> people for uh... competition. Right. I, think, on. I, think, I think if I went like 
I know more than anybody. If anybody did that, I'd be like, yeah, right, right, yo, we'll see you down the pub. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but I, I think you're 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 pretty. Uh, well, I'm I'm well, worried well, that right. if I fess up to to knowing a lot, you're going to ask me a question I can't answer. So, uh, with the caveat that I can't support it, I probably know the most. <laughs> well, we had <laughs> Stephen Colbert um, moderated our panel at uh comic-con and yeah. he is a uh, absolute mm -hmm. uh treasure trove of information and it's it's mm -hmm. daunting because there are so many people that uh this means so much to them and they are so invested in it um but i, I you know I, i'll say it yeah so are we okay well good yeah no colbert for sure he was the perfect host that is that is no question about that listen thank you so much for your time to the four of you what I've seen is breathtaking. I cannot wait for the rest. And I know the fans are just going to be dying to see this. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And best of luck with everything. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.